joining us today on behalf of the National Committee on North Korea and the East West Center in Washington. Um, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Esther Im. I'm a program manager with the National Committee on North Korea. And today is the third session in our North Korea in the World webinar series, which we co-host with the East West, East West Center in Washington. The North Korea in the World website and the series were developed to highlight North Korea's external relations and to show that North Korea is not as isolated as we might think. This year's series is focused on North Korea's historical and contemporary relations with countries in Europe and how European countries navigate relations between the United States, South Korea, and North Korea and balance national security and economic interests. And today we're so um, pleased to be joined by Dr. Dr. Nikolai Levi, Le Levy, who will be talking to us about Ambassador Kim Pyongil and what role he has played in facilitating North Korea relations. And I'm pleased to introduce Ross Tokola, our moderator for today. He is the executive associate to the, to the director at the East West Center in Washington. And you'll find his full bio in um, our program uh, link. So I will dispense with that and just turn it over to Ross so that we can get started on our discussion. Over to you, Ross. Esther, thank you very much. And uh, thank you on behalf of the East West Center for this collaboration with the National Committee on North Korea on the North Korea in the World website and on this webinar series. So always a pleasure, thank you so much. And it is now my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Nicola Libby uh, as our guest speaker. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, before we begin, I'll give a brief bio, brief bio of uh, Dr. Libby. Dr. Nicola Libby is, a, is an analyst on North Korean issues and is currently affiliated with the Boehm Institute and with the Polish Academy of Sciences. He is the author of eight books, more than 40 academic articles, and over 50 analytical reports on the Korean Peninsula, Poland, and on related issues. Dr. Livy conducts lectures at top universities in Poland and abroad. He has published extensively and offers expert commentary on Korea, including for AP News, The Independent, The National Interest, NK News, Radio Free Asia, and The Times. He has a PhD in political sciences from the Institute of Political Studies at the Polish Academy of Sciences. He has also visited the Korean Peninsula and China well over a dozen times. So uh, Dr. Libby, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, now please over to you uh, for some opening remarks. Good morning and uh, or good afternoon, wherever you are in Europe or in the US or maybe in, uh, on the Asian side. So first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me today to this, uh, uh, to this session of meetings dealing with North Korea and the external relations. Today, I will have the great pleasure to introduce you only over a few minutes about the personality of Kim Pyongil, who was a former ambassador uh, of North Korea, not only to Poland, but to uh, a couple of countries localized in uh, Central and Northern Europe. So Kim Pyongil is known as being uh, currently the only one officially son who is still alive because the other sons of Kim Il-sung, his father, passed away. The latest, the latest official one, Kim Jong-il, passed away a few years ago. But when we speak about Kim Pyong-il, uh, we, uh, we have to take into account that he is a member of the Kim family. I'm going straight to the point here because I, I get uh, uh, that uh, many of you had already a kind of knowledge about North Korea and its leadership. So I will try to go to some points which are interesting. So Kim pyong -il, is the son of Kim Il-sung and already starting from uh, the 70s, he was considered as an element as of the a side branch, let's say, uh, a member of the side branch of the Kim family. So Kim Pyongil was born, it's born on the 10th August, 1954. Uh, he used to be uh, a student at the Kim il -sung University where he got a degree in uh, economics and uh, on political sciences. Later on, he also get an additional degree studying at the Kim Il-sung Military Academy of Pyongyang. During his education, he used to be in touch, he used to study with sons of uh, leaders of North Korea, including uh, family members of Cho moon or uh, Park Zung chol who was a former uh, deputy head of state of this country. However, starting from the 
mid 60s even I would say, he was considered uh, the potential danger for the next leader of North Korea, who was supposed to be uh, who was supposed to be Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong Il, um, uh, the former leader of North Korea, never fully recognized the side branch of his family, which was dominated by his stepmother Kim Sung Hye, which is, who is the, the mother of Kim Pyong Il, and who passed away uh, two years ago and uh, the brothers and sisters of the mother of uh, Kim Pyong-il. For this purpose, Kim Jong-il used uh, several methods to step away, let me say, not only Kim Pyong-il, but also other members of the side family of Kim Il-sung. For that reason, Kim Pyong-il served uh, during more than 30 years at uh, different embassies all over Europe. Uh, for instance, at the military attaché at the Yugoslavian for uh, at the DPAK embassy in Yugoslavia, as an ambassador in Hungary, Bulgaria, Finland, Poland, and finally Czech Republic, from where he came back definitely to Pyongyang in uh, 2019. During this uh, long, uh, let me say, uh, excuse me, yes, during this long uh, presence in Europe, uh, we can wonder, uh, discuss uh, whether he was able to set up uh, a large network of people with who North Korea would be able to establish uh, new relations or to improve, let me say, uh, potential businesses made between private state North Korean companies and foreign entities. So here the, the main problem which was dealing with Kim Pyong-il is the fact that he was a member of the Kim, fam uh, of the Kim family which automatically made him very isolated, basically. When, for instance, uh, I discussed uh, with former diplomats of North Korea who used to work with Kim Pyongil, they always repeated the same issue as Kim Pyongil was living like a king, but a king in exile, a king who was completely out of the system. For instance, uh, when he was living in Europe, he used to travel to, to Switzerland. When he was in touch, uh, among other, with uh, Ri Young, who is also known as Richard, who was giving him some cash, some financial amenities, let me say, in order to provide him a comfortable life wherever uh, used to be. When, for instance, he used to travel to come back to Pyongyang on a yearly basis, he also used to travel uh, using the business or even the, the first class uh, to Pyongyang. But in any case, his influence toward potential, a potential business was very, very limited. On the other side, it can be noted, like in the case of Poland, for instance, where he served between uh, 1998 and 2018, he was surrounded by several diplomats who are still, as of 2022, working at the DPAK in, uh, in Warsaw. I'm uh, thinking here, among other, to the, at the commercial attaché uh, Rayong Ju, who is living in Poland since around 30 years. On the other side, uh, when we look to some gossip, to some remorse, uh, I heard, for instance, that Kim pyong il was involved in some uh, trade of weapons between North Korea and Africa, and it or also another remorse, which has no real background, was that uh, it was a very close associate to a former 
four stars general named Ri Yong Ho, who disappeared from the political life a few years ago. So uh, when also we look to the, let's say, illegal activities of the North Korean embassies who were well realized all over Europe, I'm thinking here to the outlining of buildings, for instance, in Sofia or in Warsaw or even in Helsinki, as far as I know. So of course, uh, this ambassador was informed about it, but definitely he was not the main here coordinator who was dealing with, with, with these issues. So in any case, I would say that if Kim Pyongil would not be, uh, let me say, a member of the Kim family, his possibilities to create some network would be bigger. How to, uh, bigger, more important, how to justify it? Simply by taking in account that uh, Kim Pyong Kil, who was accused of uh, co organizing two coup d'etat against uh, Kim Jong il, lost a large network of his friends in the 80s or 90s. What I mean by the loss of his network is basically the fact that uh, his friends, who were generals, who were businessmen, who had different venture in China, but they were coming from North Korea, all of them were executed or sent to labor camps in North Korea. So what I mean here is that uh, Kim pyong il in other words, has no real network as of now in North Korea, which prevent a uh, potential partner, for instance, from Poland, when he was working in Poland, to be in touch with what I would say the right person in, uh, in North Korea. Furthermore, the personality of Kim pyong il was uh, also uh, highly, let me say, uh, controlled, highly uh, yes, controlled by other North Korean diplomats. And also when we look to diplomats who were based in the previous embassy that I mentioned previously, some of them used to follow Kim pyong il and her false names also at other embassies. For instance, some former diplomats who are working with him in Central Europe continue to be, to follow him when he was working in Prague as an ambassador of uh, North Korea to Czech Republic. So finally, as my time is limited, I, I just wanted to underline the fact that Kim pyong il in any case may not be the right person here in order to uh, let me say, create some potential business links with North Korea. However, and that is a point which is quite often uh, mentioned in the South Korean press, especially by uh, the former uh, North Korean diplomat uh, to the North Korean embassy in London, Taeyong Ho, who considered Kim Pyong il as a potential future leader of, uh, of North Korea. I, I, I do not share such point of view because I do consider that uh, in spite of uh, having uh, some interesting skills, for instance, speaking in foreign languages, uh, like in English to some kind of German, but also Polish to some extent, his, let me say, abilities are not definitely not enough in order to be a future leader of a potential new North Korea, let me say, which would emerge without the personality 
of Kim Jong Un. I would also one more point come to my mind. I do consider also that uh, Kim Pyong Kil, who always appreciated to be in Europe, to be far away from Pyongyang, was probably also not considered as being so important or so meaningful for the North Korean leadership because uh, it would not be a problem for, let me say, the North Korean special forces to murder Kim Pyongil when he was abroad. Here I am making, of course, a comparison with uh, one of the half brother of Kim Jong-un, I mean here, Kim Jong-nam, who was uh, murdered at one of the airports of the cities in Indonesia. So regarding the personality and my personal feeling regarding this uh, son of uh, Kim Il-sung, that is my main point. So now, of course, I'm open to any questions, uh, to any remarks, of course, that if you would like to uh, emphasize on some points. Thank you again. Nicola, thank you so much. And um, thank you to everyone as well who is joining us for today's webinar. If you have questions, I encourage you to include them in the chat or the Q&A, and uh, I'll read them out as we go. Uh, before we turn to the audience, uh, I have a couple of questions to ask. Uh, firstly, I was reading in one of your articles earlier about the um, how the decision to have Kim Pyong-il and others classified as part of the lateral branch or side branch of the Kim family was quite a political one. So maybe before going into Kim Pyong-il's later career, uh, could you speak a little bit to how what the contest looked like between Kim Jong-il, uh, Kim Pyong-il, and uh, how Kim Pyong-il became a member of the Kim family, so to speak, estranged. So the, it seems here that uh, it's not according to my view, but also according to defectors who were in touch with, uh, with Kim Pyong-il, uh, the main problem was that uh, Kim Pyong-il was coming from the lateral branch, which means that his mother, Kim sung a who replaced, uh, let me say, uh, Kim Jong-duk here, uh, the mother, the biological mother of Kim Jong-il. So Kim sung a was never appreciated by, not only by Kim Jong-il, but also by Kim Kyung-hee, who is the older sister of uh, Kim Jong-il. Both of them consider that not only Kim, uh, Kim Pyong-il was, uh, let me say, a negative element, or let me say the hair of uh, Kim song ae and that's why he was naturally supposed to be removed. And he was especially supposed to be removed because the power of his mother, Kim Song-ae, was especially important in the late 60s and in the beginning of the 70s. Here, we do have to keep in mind that uh, already in 1968, at a secret meeting of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea, Kim Il-sung presented his official, I underline, oldest son, Kim Jong-il, as his future heir. But it seems that Kim Jong-il knew that uh, this presentation does, didn't mean that he will be the future leader because he kept in mind the history of North Korea for the, la late, for the last 20 years, where leaders of North Korea were simply murdered by the close guard of Kim Il-sung. And I guess that Kim Jong-il was not so safe at, the, at his place of a potential successor. That's why, Keeping in mind that uh, Kim Il-sung was highly trusting his family, Kim Jong-il knew that potential, a potential threat to him 
would may emerge from other members of his family. And these other members were thus belonging to this lateral branch of the Kim family. That is why not only Kim Pyongil was, let me say, throw away from Pyongyang already in the mid 70s, where he used to study in Germany, but also the, bro the biological brother of Kim uh, Pyongil named uh, Kim Yong Il, who also studied in Germany, but also worked as uh, a trade attaché at the North Korean embassy in Berlin until his death in 2002, but also other sisters and brothers, including Kim Kyung Jin, the, the wife of the former ambassador of North Korea to Austria, who, in spite of being a woman, maybe in a case where Kim Pyong Il would get a high position. So maybe Kim Kyung Jin was also able to get, a, for example, a similar position to the one that Kim Sung Ke, uh, Kim Sung had in the beginning of the 70s. So the danger was not only related to Kim Pyong Il, but to all of this lateral branch. Secondly, uh, Kim Pyong Il, of course, was uh, conscious of his family. And in the mid, in the beginning of the 70s, so he was around 28. We need to keep it in mind here. He was still a, a young military officer, uh, even not a one-star general, but he has already a network of people who were especially working in the ministry of the secret police of North Korea. And Kim Jong-il was very afraid of this network of people. I mentioned among others, the son of Cho moon -Zop previously, but there are other many people. And all of them used to meet Kim Pyong-il even to louder him by saying Kim Pyong-il manze and so on. And uh, Kim Jong-il to one of these parties sent, let me say, a spy or a similar person who uh, transmitted the content of these meetings to Kim Il-sung. And Kim Il-sung started to be angry on that and say, I am the leader, not Kim Pyong-il. And on the other side, Kim Jong-il was very discreet, was only making his work focused fully on his job. And for this purpose, it is not Kim Jong-il who decided to move away, to throw away Kim Pyong-il and his family, but the decision came from Kim Il-sung himself. Kim Il-sung also was informed by some corruption affairs which were related to one of the brother of his wife, Kim sung ke I mean here, uh, So Kwan He, and uh, this brother, Kim Sung Gap also, sorry, and these brothers were also uh, thrown from the North Korean le leadership. Also in the 70s, unfortunately, the wife of uh, Kim Il Sung, Ki Kim Sung Gap was around uh, 65, 70 years old, started to be sick and she was automatically uh, expelled, let me say, from this North Korean leadership. Because keep in mind what I say that at the beginning of the 70s, Kim Sung Ke was the number person who was the second person, the most important in North Korea. So here only a medical element was a potential driver, <clears throat> which was which removed her, let me say, from the leader, the North Korean leadership. So all of these reasons uh, finally led to a situation that all this lateral branch was out of North Korea, but has no additional impact 
over the North Korean internal, I must acknowledge, policy. Here being based, of course, uh, abroad at several embassies. Thank you very much. With this background of his relationship with his family in mind, and given the limited role of his ambassadorial functioning in Europe, um, he was in Hungary, um, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Finland between 1988 and 1998. But he was in Poland for 17 years, 1998 to 2015, and then the Czech Republic from 2015 to 2019. So what guided his postings? Or why was he put between these different, um, these different countries? And given that he was estranged from the Kim family, and given that, as you said, he was not the main coordinator, so to, say, so to speak, of the Korea, North Korean embassies, you said he was highly controlled by diplomats and he was not the right person to make business links. What did European government officials in these countries make of his role as ambassador? How did this dynamic affect um, European diplomats' ability to engage with him directly for, as opposed to his, the diplomats underneath him nominally? What did that relationship look like over the years? So I, I would say here that uh, first of all, we need to keep in mind, this is a small point of course, but when it was thrown to, to Hungary in 1988, uh, I checked uh, a list of uh, around 30 to 40 North Korean ambassadors who served in uh, several North Korean embassies. And Kim Pyongil was the youngest of all North Korean ambassadors here. And uh, he, wa he was removed very fastly from Hungary because Hungary in 88 uh, start, established uh, official diplomatic relation with South Korea and automatically all countries uh, which had a similar behavior uh, removed their uh, North Korean ambassadors from these countries. But in any case, uh, after for a few years, uh, after yes, he was removed to Bulgaria Finally, and after he switched to, after from Bulgaria, where he uh, remained for a few years, and uh, he came back to Pyongyang between 1994 and 1997. So, the question is, why did he come back to Pyongyang? So, here we, we need to keep in mind that that was a specific mourning period in North Korea. Uh, the, Kim Il sung passed away on the 8th July 1994, and during these three years, uh, Kim Pyongil was involved in some military affairs, but to a very low, let me say, uh, position. After when he came back to Europe, to Finland in 1997, to Finland and to, uh, to Poland, uh, his ability to speak with other diplomats was also very limited. Usually, Kim pyong used, uh, I mean, diplomat they used to meet on a regular basis for uh, national days of each country at the embassies, which are in a specific country. So in Poland, when you, where you have around uh, 60 up to 70 embassies, that would mean that they would have one or two meetings a week. But Kim pyong <clears throat> due not to the nature of the country, but to the fact that he was a Kim family member, never or attended only a few receptions on a yearly basis. <clears throat> he used wherever he was, in Finland, in Bulgaria, Poland and Czech Republic. And I would even say that the situation became worse for him in Czech Republic. He used to go to receptions, organized parties, organized by the Chinese embassy, Russian one, and sometimes to the Romanian or one or two specific embassies. But basically, when also I do have, uh, in 2019, when he came back to Pyongyang, for instance, uh, the embassies of countries such as Poland, Bulgaria, or Romania, who used to make also uh, some evenings, some receptions, some parties at their embassy in Pyongyang, 
they also the presence of Kim Pyong-il was not noticed. Because usually, former diplomats, for instance, in Poland, they used to go to parties which are organized <coughs> by the Polish embassy in Pyongyang. But in the case of Kim Pyong-il, these possibilities was made uh, unavailable. And also, his network of friends, wherever he was in Europe, was also very limited. But I underline that that is due, that is a kind of punishment uh, in, my, in my mind, because we can compare it, for instance, to the personality of Kim Kwang Zop, who was the North Korean ambassador to Austria during 20 years, but who was also the husband of the sister of Kim pyong -il. So we may imagine that also his duties were highly limited when he was serving in Vienna, in the main city of Austria. But no, we had here a contrary situation where Kim Kwang Zop quite often used to appear in public uh, what was totally different from uh, the public appearances, let me say, of Kim pyong Hill and his family. So I would even say that the psychological consequences of his journey in Europe were uh, dramatic for the personality of Kim pyong Hill, but based on my personal insight, I am sure that Kim pyong Hill felt safer in Europe than in North Korea. Thank you. So that kind of goes to my, that goes to the uh, question that my colleague Esther Im just asked in the chat. Yep. Uh, given the, what you just said, he felt safer in Europe. Why do you think he was recalled to Pyongyang in 2019? Uh, what would guide to that decision? And what do you think he's been doing in North Korea over the past three years? Um, in 2019, a large number of North Korean ambassadors were recalled to Pyongyang. It uh, does not only, it is not only here related to uh, the personality of Kim Pyongil, but also to Kim Kwang Zop, the former ambassador to Austria, who was removed from his position on the same time. Why they were removed, why they were not able to remain in, <clears throat> in Europe. They may have here uh, the main here uh, reasons that I may mention, there are two reasons who come to my mind. First of all, as I told you, Kim pyong Kil used to have a broad network in North Korea. And this network, uh, through different purges uh, who took place in the 80s and the 90s, was completely destroyed, does not more exist as of now. And I may presume <coughs> that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as of uh, 2019, Kim pyong -il is no more considered as being a danger for the North Korean leadership. I may even assume that if Kim Jong-il would be still alive, probably due to the harsh relation between both of them. But here, I also keep in mind that Kim Jong-il used to call Kim pyong -il also in Europe. That, that is also an interesting here element. But if Kim Jong-il would be alive, I am pretty sure that Kim pyong -il would probably remain in Europe. The second reason which uh, made uh, that uh, Kim pyong -il came back uh, to North Korea, probably he was also uh, he represented, let me say, a specific 
expenditure for North Korea, who decided, who may have decided to cut costs of its foreign representation. Here, when we observe the number of diplomats who are based in North Korean embassies in Europe, we notice that their number is getting weaker and weaker on a yearly basis. So maybe for uh, saving reasons. There is also a third reason which come to my mind. I know that Kim Pyongil a few years ago became a, a grandfather. And that's why, because his daughter came back to Pyongyang a few years before him, she was living with him all around Europe. She married a KPA uh, general in Pyongyang and gave birth to one child also. So I guess that probably there was also some familiar, let me say, family reasons which uh, motivated him to come back mm. to his country. Thank you. Uh, there are a number of questions in the uh, Q&A, and a couple of them are specifically interested in why Kim Kyung il was posted to Eastern Europe. Um, um, see, why was he in, uh, let's say, now former Soviet Union, European states? Okay. It also speaks to the question of his dynamic with the Kim family. Like, why was he not posted to elsewhere in the world without communist influence, where he might have had even less of, even less of a diplomatic in, influence than he already had. So here, mm, <clears throat> there is a story uh, that told me a former Polish ambassador to North Korea who asked personally to Kim Jong-il, to Kim Jong-il, yes, why Kim Pyongil was posted to Poland. And Kim Jong-il, theoretically here, answered that uh, you should consider that that is a great honor for Poland to have a member of the Kim family in your country. But of course, that was the answer of Kim Jong-il. The a more, let me say, viable answer to the question and uh, his, uh, let's say, but that is my assumption. I, I don't know if it's true, but there are some justification. So the fact that Poland for 30 years was considered uh, the nest of spies for North Korean spies in Central Europe. That was the headquarter. This information was confirmed among other by a former North Korean official uh, who served in Austria and who defected a few years ago, Kim Jong-il here. And uh, taking in account the background of Kim Pyongil, who uh, in the early 70s was also serving in the Ministry of uh, Armed Forces of North Korea, maybe, maybe Kim Pyongil was a kind of uh, coordinator of these special forces in Central Europe. However, as I told you, due to his isolation, which was obvious, especially in Poland, due to his health problems also, in our country, he had some problem with, with his health, used to be hospitalized several times also in Poland. He was made forbidden to drink alcohol also for a while, as far as I remember. Um, I still think that uh, his presence in Poland was rather symbolical. When we come back, for example, to his appointment when he was in Finland, the, I don't hear um, just checking on my notes, one name I'm able uh, to find it, unfortunately. Uh, yes, no, I don't have this name, but whatever. Uh, when he was um, nominated at the North Korean ambassador to Finland, 
I know that the former North Korean ambassador had a very a good health condition, but he was suddenly removed from this position. And some defectors, so we are here in around 1995, and some defectors mentioned to me that in 1992, around 1992, there were several coup d'etat where Kim Pyongil was supposed to have a, a specific function. So I imagine that uh, in this period of time, uh, Kim Pyongil, who was for a while in Pyongyang, was suddenly forced to be removed somewhere in the world. And I imagine that he was not removed to Middle East, for instance, because in Middle East, uh, there were already some experienced North Korean diplomats, which, uh, have, which have a large background, a large knowledge, especially related to the trade of weapons, for instance. A knowledge which was not able to be gained by Kim Pyongil because he was already based as a diplomat since 1982 in Belgrade, in the former Yugoslavia. So I get that the positioning of uh, Kim Pyongil in Eastern Europe uh, was uh, more, let me say, uh, an issue with no real here justification, in my opinion. That also answers uh, Benjamin uh, Katz of Slobrestein's question about why Kim Kyung il was posted to Finland. Uh, is it because of his health? That was the primary reason he was placed there? <clears throat> That's a good question here. We just know that in 1994, the cooperation between Finland and North Korea was more or less limited to the smuggling of some cigar tobaccos, hmm. the smuggling of one part of the building, and visits of North Korean scientists who visited some crops of potatoes all around uh, Finland. But basically there were no, Finland was not the headquarter of North Korea, let me say in Northern Europe, because the most important uh, embassy in this region was in Stockholm in, uh, in Sweden. So no real, let me say, uh, maybe it was due to this uh, coup d'etat, to this, let me say the danger that is still represented in North Korea and uh, the Mofe of North Korea tried to find the place which would be fastly, where Kim pyong il would be able to, to be and where he, <clears throat> he would not uh, create additional problems, let me say, on that way. Thank you. And on that, I'll combine some of the other questions in the Q&A. Um, so he was recalled to Pyongyang in 2019. Why did he go to Pyongyang in 2019, given the danger to him? And another uh, member of the audience is asking, uh, could you elaborate on why you don't see Kim Kyung-il as the next leader of North Korea? Why is he not considered for the succession? Okay, and, so let, let me first answer with that point. He cannot, he has no more, he has no more network. Of yeah. I mean, starting from 2019 until today, do not, think that he is able to build a network of potential leaders of North Korea. If in a case where there will be no pandemic, we can imagine that this would be possible. But North Korea during the COVID-19 pandemic was highly a closed country, even for its leadership. Let me give you some example. There were some diplomats from North Korea who were removed from their position in Europe in 2020, these diplomats who were close to Kim Jong-un or to the deceased Kim Jong-il were not able to go inside North Korea to come back to their country. They were forced, for instance, to remain at the Russian or uh, sorry, at the North Korean embassy in Moscow or in Beijing for a couple of Monsies. So North Korea was very close. So even during these three years that we mentioned, nobody from abroad come back to North Korea. From, I mean, leaders, diplomats, uh, businessmen, and so on. Secondly, 
in the country inside in itself was closed also. So no real possibilities to, let's say, create a network from an internal uh, perspective. And third, the other dimension, the former network of Kim pyong that I mentioned during the 80s and 90s, all of them are dead or all of them are in labor camps. So no network, which may justify, on this may be a justification. Uh, he has no political basis. That, that is what I mean in North Korea, which automatically prevent him from being a leader of North Korea. However, the, there is a positive point regarding Kim Pyong-il. It is the fact that he has no negative background. He, being outside of the country, he was not able to manage, let me say, some purges, to send people to labor camps. So basically, he is clean, let me say, from my perspective. On this element is only one of the argument, we, one of the elements which may justify him as, <clears throat> which may justify the fact that maybe he may not be a leader of North Korea, but he may have a position somewhere in a future leadership of North Korea, which would exclude Kim Jong-un. But I, I don't take this possibility in account from my perspective. And there, there was also a second question about, uh, because I'm starting from the second one, yes. what was the first one that you mentioned. Why he was called back to Pyongyang in 2019, yes? You did answer that one. Yeah, I repeat. Why did he go back? That, that, that was the point. That's right. Given the danger to him, given so, his position in North Korea. Yes, okay. So here, of course, I am not uh, in uh, in the why. I mean, he has no other, no real other possibilities. The other, I think that there is a family element which forced him to come back to Pyongyang. But if he would not come back to Pyongyang, what he can do? He may defect, of course. But uh, if you would, and I'm sure that here the United States authorities would be have a great pleasure to have another member of the Kim family in their country, because we already know that some members of uh, the Kim family defected, among others, to Switzerland, but they are currently living in the U.S. And uh, I, but as we see, Kim Pyong Il probably here did not get this opportunity to defect. And probably he considered that he was enough safe to come back to, uh, to Pyongyang because uh, he know that he is no more a danger for the current North Korean leadership represented by the personality of uh, Kim Jong-un. I think that again, if Kim Jong-il would be alive, the return of Kim Pyongil in 2019 would be postponed later in the future. Because the relation between these two persons was still very complicated until the beginning of the 2000s, let me say. In spite of the fact that they used to call each other when Kim Pyongil was based in Europe, but uh, Kim pyong has always a high level of distrust toward the former leader uh, of North Korea. You've spoken to a number of defectors about Kim pyong il about his reputation, about how he's perceived in North Korea. Uh, to what extent does it still matter, if at all, that he is the last surviving son of Kim Il-sung? What is his reputation among the defectors, if you could even try to amalgamate it? And have you spoken to South Koreans about what their impression is of Kim Pyongyil? Do South Korean watchers of North Korea see him as someone that it will be significant at all going forward? So regarding from the South Korean perspective, uh, the, the relevancy of the person of uh, Kim Pyongyil is, let, is very limited, let me say. Because the uh, South Korean analyst, including uh, uh, Chung Sung Jong here, from uh, the former uh, leader of the Sejong 
uh, Cheong Seong Chang, sorry, from the Sejong Institute uh, in Seoul, used to because uh, we we used to discuss on a re on a re regular basis, not only based on the fact that uh, he was studying in France uh, at the same university as me, but also uh, he used to we we we, we mentioned that uh, Kim Jong Il was. Yeah, he was considered as important, yes, in the 80s, but later the disappearance of this network uh, made uh, that uh, Kim Pyong Il was no more relevant, let me say, in the establishment of uh, the system. Furthermore, is it important that he's in the Kim family? On here, if we consider that the Kim family is associated to uh, starvations to economic problems. I would say that uh, this would be uh, negative <clears throat> for the reputation of Kim Pyong Il. But if we associate Kim Jong Un with, let me say, a relative economic success, an improving economic stable, stable economic situation, yes, being a member of the Kim of the Kim family uh, may bring to him some benefits. Furthermore, the defector uh, with who I am in touch uh, are getting older simply, and uh, the newest, let me say, generation of defectors. I'm thinking to people who are 40, 50s. They basically were not in touch with Kim Pyong Il during their life. So the degree of relevancy of Kim Pyong Il is decreasing over the years. And as long as Kim Jong Un will be the leader of North Korea, so the role of Kim Pyong Il in, the, in North Korea, the potential import uh, relevant role of Kim Pyong Il in North Korea is decreasing. As of now, if you would ask me uh, <clears throat> what is the position of Kim Pyong Kil in North Korea. I am not able to answer uh, to this question, not able, especially in the context of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which uh, make, uh, which reduce the possibility of drawing some uh, interesting and let me say viable conclusions about the fate of the half brother of uh, Kim Jong Il, we may imagine that uh, he's retired because we keep in mind that he is 68. He will be 69. He's 68 in, in exactly two weeks, three weeks. Now, he may be working at the Ministry of uh, Armed Forces of North Korea, but definitely, on base on here on the viable knowledge. He is not involved in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of North Korea. So if we don't know what, we, what he is doing, we know at least where he is not involved as of now, let me say. In that Thank you very much. We're coming towards the end of our time, but I just want to ask you one or two final questions. If you could sit down with Kim Kyung il today and have a conversation with him, what would you ask him? What kind of conversation would you like to have with him? I would ask him, what, what were you doing in Poland during these 20 years? What were your psychological condition in our country? And uh, what is your perception of, your, of the future of North Korea? Because I had the occasion to meet the Kim family several, a couple of times, several times. And uh, I noted that uh, all of them were very pleased to be in Poland. I mean, during private discussions also, definitely. However, uh, when it came closer to 2015, 16, 17, uh, Kim Pyong Il, and his, uh, who was getting older, was definitely feeling uh, worse, let me say, than in the past, probably due to his age and probably to the fact that I underline that he was considered as a king in a golden cage, even in Poland. Here, that, that, that would be my, my, my perception here. 
yeah. in Poland, a king in a golden cage, was there some extent to which he was, say, under the protection of the Polish government, keeping him away from the Kim family? Or was it simply, as you suggested earlier, the story you told us, it was an honor for Poland to have a member of the Kim family be the uh, ambassador to the country. And I did miss one question earlier about whether uh, North Korean labor, forced labor activity in Poland was part of the portfolio. But uh, you also mentioned that uh, the king in the golden cage was not necessarily on operational elements of the embassy's uh, activity in Poland. So if you could say a few more remarks on that, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So regarding the first point, uh, one uh, one uh, one element come to my mind uh, several times, as you know, the, the as you know the no, but not only North Korea, but communist countries, and I underline communist countries used to outlet their buildings to companies. Poland used to do it in China, in Mongolia. Uh, the Czech Republic had us, uh, were doing the same in the 80s. And I remember that uh, the, the Polish Mofe used to send letters to the North Korean embassy in Warsaw regarding this outlating of billing. And I remember once when Kim Pyongil say, uh, no problem, you can do the same in, in Pyongyang also. If the Polish embassy would like to outlet its, its buildings in Pyongyang, you can do also the same. And one time I also remember when Kim Pyongil said that uh, <laughs> if you are not satisfied with the current situation, uh, we may decide, We what I mean by we are, the North Korean diplomats in Poland, we can decide to move from your country. But on the other side, be sure that your diplomats based in Pyongyang will be also automatically removed. So I, I guess here that the diplomats here in Poland, in the case of Kim Pyongil, they had for sure a specific protection because during 20 years, there was a Polish policeman who was staying in front of the North Korean embassy in Warsaw. And that is a special treatment to some specific embassies in Poland. Of course, I'm not speaking about the current Russian embassy, but there is a, a similar situation dealing with the embassy of Iran, dealing with the embassy of uh, Vietnam also. So probably there is somewhere a degree of, uh, of protection <clears throat> where Poland is involved. At which level, I don't know. I'm just speaking about a raw fact. Regarding the second point that you mentioned and which was dealing with the uh, North Korean workers who were in Poland, I can definitely say that, of course, KPI was uh, aware of uh, that, that situation, but those who were managing this, uh, let's say, project were people who used to live in Poland for the last 20 up to 30 years. And that, that was a similar case in the case of North Korean workers in Czech Republic, in Malta, and so on. So because these people, they have a real knowledge of Poland, in the case of Poland, they do speak Polish. They have their own companies in Poland who were recruiting these North Korean workers. So in other words, Kim pyong was not able to create a company. I checked uh, the management board of these, let's say, Polish companies managed by North Koreans in Poland and never the name of Kim pyong appeared in these documents. So his role here was no more than passive for sure. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nic Dr. Nicola Livy. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined our webinar. And uh, thank you on behalf of the East West Center to the National Committee on North Korea uh, for co-hosting this series. Uh, for everyone who's tuned in, I encourage you to uh, sign up to our newsletters, um, our social media, and please stay tuned for uh, future installments of this series and other uh, webinars and publications shared by the National Committee on North Korea and the East-West Center. So once again, Dr. Nicola Livy, thank you so much for joining us, and I wish you all a very good day. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for all of your questions. Have a nice day also.